really um, been helpful. And I have the skills that, you know, a class, I don't think would teach me this in right. the way of this real life application and seeing it in real time, uh, failing or, or, or not succeeding, but then, okay, now what do we do next? The right. now what, <laughs> you know, right. that's still important. And so how do we continue um, to move things forward and make changes? And, and that's, that's been really yeah. beneficial to me. Hello, and welcome to Student Affairs Now. I'm your host, Keith Edwards. Today, we're talking about senior level student affairs leaders who have participated in community boards and their per personal and professional experiences and learnings. Today's episode topic was recommended by Dr. Hilary Lichterman, a past guest on two podcasts. Thank you to Hilary. And I'm joined by three leaders who have experience on community boards who can talk with us about the benefits, challenges, and considerations to be aware of for folks looking for these opportunities. I'm so excited to hear more from each of you and learn more from each of you. Student Affairs Now is the premier podcast and online learning community for thousands of us who work in, alongside, or adjacent to the field of higher education and student affairs. We release new episodes every week on Wednesdays. Find details about this episode or browse our archives at studentaffairsnow.com. This episode is sponsored by Leadership. Go to leadership.org to learn how they can work with you to create a just, caring, and thriving world. This episode is also sponsored by Vector Solutions, formerly EverFi. The trusted partner for more than 2,000 colleges and universities, Vector Solutions is, a, is the standard of care for student safety, well being, and inclusion. As I mentioned, I'm your host, Keith Edwards. My pronouns are he, him, his. I'm a speaker, consultant, and coach, and you can find out more about me at keithedwards.com. I'm broadcasting from Minneapolis, Minnesota, at the intersections of the ancestral homelands of both the Dakota and the Ojibwe peoples. Let's get to the conversation. Let's meet our guests. Uh, we asked each of you to introduce yourselves a little bit, your professional role, and also the boards that you're being involved in. Uh, Alvin, let's go ahead and start off with you. Great. Thank you so much, Keith. Um, and, and thank you for the invitation to join you for this discussion. I'm Alvin Sturdivant. I serve as the Vice Provost for Student Development at Seattle University, where I've been for 12 years and five years in particular in this role. Um, I'm involved um, quite extensively in the community. Um, I'm currently on three boards. Um, I just recently joined the Swedish Health Systems Board of Trustees um, for a three-year term. I'm also the chair of the Meredith Matthews East Madison YMCA Board um, of Governors. Um, that's a, a neighborhood-specific um, YMCA branch. Um, and then lastly, I'm a board member for the Central District Forum for Arts and Ideas. Um, and that is, um, a, again, a neighborhood specific uh, board um, that focuses around um, arts development for youth and their families. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. I, I'm super curious about all of those and, and about you. So looking forward to hearing more about those. Uh, Sheree, why don't you tell us a little bit more about you? Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for the invitation. My name is Sheree Meeks, and my pronouns are she, her, hers. And I currently serve as the Assistant Dean for Programs, Diversity, and Inclusion in the W.A. Frankie Honors College at the University of Arizona. Um, I serve on one, I would call a traditional board, um, which is the Girl Scouts of Southern Arizona. I serve on that board. Um, but some other um, experiences that I have that I believe are boards in a different capacity. I serve as the president of uh, uh, the NAACP here in uh, Tucson. I have also served on the commission, the University of Arizona's Commission on the Status of Women. Uh, I also serve on our Mayor's Racial Equity and Justice Advisory Council. Mm -hmm. So yeah. community involvement is very important to me. Yeah, lots of great involvement. I want to hear more about that. And Tanisha, tell us a little bit more about you. Sure. My name is Tanisha Price Johnson, and I'm the Associate Dean of Student Affairs at the Keck School of Medicine at the University of Southern California. After spending much time at the University of Arizona working with uh, Cherie in some uh, elements, I currently serve on the Girl Scouts of Southern Arizona Board as well. Uh, been a longtime member and current president of the University of Arizona Black Alumni. Uh, in addition to that, also serve on the University of Arizona um, African American Alliance Board and uh, formerly served as the president of the YWCA, of which I'm still affiliated with. Mm -hmm. I love that we're seeing really a divergence of boards and involvement and topics. 
but also some convergence and some interconnections here as well. This is really great. Um, I, I really want to hear more about all of these, uh, and mostly, uh, you know, as you share some of the things you're involved in, um, really curious about how this connects with you all professionally. Maybe it's unprofessionally related and is just a personal passion that you don't get to really address in your professional life that you get to connect with in some of this other involvement. Maybe it's really interconnected, but love to hear from each of you a little bit about the benefits and challenges of your involvement in these boards, both personally and professionally. Uh, Tanisha, let's, let's start off with you. What's What's been the upsides and the downsides and the challenges? Sure, I, I would say the benefits are being able to step out of your comfort zone and get more um, familiar with political trends, current trends outside of higher education, because many times those um, aspects eventually show up in your line of work. Um, I think in all of these uh, different um, affiliations, you're able to serve as an ambassador and many times once they identify or know that you work on a major um, university campus, there are plenty of opportunities for intersection collaboration. So I think those are definitely the benefits. I would probably say some of the challenges include, well, time management <laughs> and how much do you give to one organization? Uh, I know that my experience has been, most of the times I find my niche in these different organizations and, and then tend to volunteer, lead a subcommittee or a work group, or even lead the organization. But I think one of the major challenges is when you realize that you've stepped in to um, onto a board and it doesn't actually align with what your passions are or what, what your personal mission is, and then having a conversation to either determine how to figure out your ways to contribute or sometimes um, having to step off and um, allow someone else to fill that role. So I've had experiences with both, but I think um, definitely for the most point, most part, um, the benefits outweigh, outweigh those challenges. Mm -hmm. Well, I think time management is obvious, but I love that you're pointing to folks who may be listening to this, curious about board involvement, maybe have been asked or invited or thinking about it or something they want to pursue. It seems like an early lesson here is to really do your homework, because it seems like uh, much better to find out early on if it's a good fit or not, rather than to agree and find out later and then have to get out of it or reconfigure expectations. Uh, Sheree, what would you, what did you resonate with or add to what Tanisha has offered us here? You know, so I was thinking, can I just say ditto and, and be done? Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> I agree with all of that. Um, I would add that, you know, I believe the benefits are finding something that you care about and having that outlet to do the thing that is important to you. So when I think about some of the involvement um, that I have, it is those things that I care about, the things that I care mm -hmm. about whether or not I'm getting paid for it. Mm -hmm. And so I believe that that is extremely important. Um, sometimes we, you know, I have found myself confined to, uh, you know, a roles and responsibilities. And there may be things that um, don't really allow me time, according to, you know, an employer to participate in some of these things. So, but I want those experiences. I want to be able to connect. Um, and so, I often have found ways um, to go out and seek those things that, that I'm not having um, a lot of access to in, in my role. Um, so that's important to me, that community involvement, that staying busy. And I know as we talk about you know, time management, that, that can be really difficult. But um, if I care about something, you know, I, I believe you know, we make time for the things that are important to us. And so mm -hmm. I often find those things um, that are important to me. I believe that the time management is <laughs> absolutely a challenge. Um, mm -hmm. For instance, uh, being a part of Girl Scouts of Southern Arizona, I also did not really know much about the board. When I was a little girl, I was a daisy, I was a brownie. So I had that experience mm -hmm. and have not you know, been involved for many, many years. And so to come back to it, I'm seeing it from a different perspective. So there's also this learning. Mm -hmm. um, but one of the challenges is for me has been wondering whether or not invitations have come to me because of certain identities that I hold. Mm -hmm. um, I, in, in all honesty, I've had people that have kind of pulled me to the side to say, hey, we are looking for ways to increase our diversity. And so mm -hmm. in some ways, I appreciate knowing that up front, but in other ways, I think 
do you value what I bring to the table aside from whatever identity you have selected that is the reason why you have chosen me for this. And so it's important to think about self-care in -hmm. this involvement and and why am I here and how much of myself am I expected to give that others may not be expected to give. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wanting to contribute from that perspective, but also not wanting to be tokenized and essentialized into that. Uh, You're reminding me of a conversation I often have with uh, people who I'm coaching particularly around their career is what is it that you really need in life? And then do you need to get all those things from your job? And the, the, the real freedom that goes, yeah, I need these things in my life, but I don't have to get them from my job. And you're saying, I found these other things that, that have been able to meet your needs without having your job have to do all of that heavy yes. lifting. It'd be really great. Alvin, what would you like to add to what we're talking about here about the benefits and challenges? what Tanisha and Sheree have offered thus far certainly resonates with me as well. So Sheree, when you said ditto, I was thinking the exact same thing um, <laughs> earlier. You know, it, it, it's, it's interesting because it's, for me, a marrying together of the things that I'm passionate about um, and um, my community involvement and engagement. And in my instance, each of the three boards that I'm currently involved in are a part of the neighborhood that either I live in um, or work in. Um, and so it provides me with an opportunity to contribute, you know, in meaningful um, ways um, to areas that are quite important to me. Uh, you know, so as I reference, I'm currently um, involved with the Swedish Health Systems Board of Trustees. I just recently joined that board. In fact, this is my first month as a full trustee um, in, in that particular group. And, and health equity in particular is the reason um, that I joined um, that board. Um, you know, I've had a number of personal circumstances that have resulted in my engagement with that particular health system. Um, and as a result, I was able to see the inner workings um, of the, the, the program. And so when I was approached about joining the board, um, I had a very personal connection and reason um, for wanting to do so. Um, and the same is the case um, for the YMCA um, in the Central District Forum. Um, I'm, I'm very passionate about arts. I'm passionate about youth development. Um, and um, this gave me the opportunity to really engage in that work in ways that are very different from my professional role um, and to do so in a neighborhood in which I live um, and care very deeply about the, the, the neighborhood that we're situated in. In each of these instances um, is one of the most historic neighborhoods in the state of Washington in that it has historically um, been home to uh, a, a very robust um, African American community. Um, certainly, gentrification has had its impact, uh, but it still um, is rooted in that. And and so the the work that I do with each of these boards really gives me an opportunity to represent the interest of this neighborhood um, and its you know total sort of catchment area, uh, but also um, to really invest um, in an area um, that for twelve years um, has been home to me um, and gives me an opportunity to really. Um, influence the kinds of directions that we're taking. Mm-hmm. I guess one of the things I'm, I'm hearing here is Tanisha talking about how the, the community involvement and the professional merge as they learn and expertise and connections. And Sharice started talking about the personal, like there's this other side of me that I don't get connected. And then you're really, Elvin, talking about uh, a really place-based uh, value, right? About really wanting to invest in the community that you, that you live and work in. Uh, so many wonderful organizations doing so many wonderful things. Um, but I heard you all say, you know, time management is difficult, setting aside the time. Sheree talked about sort of the challenges around, am I being tokenized for my identity? And where's the value? And how do I manage that boundaries? Uh, self-care. Um, you're all involved in multiple things. Um, others aren't involved in anything. For folks who maybe want to get started on this aspect of their life. Um, What suggestions would you have for exploring, connecting, even just finding these opportunities? I know I have thought about this and the only time I really hear about board opportunities is when people are in them. (laughs) Oh, you got on that. Oh yeah, it wasn't hard. It was great. I'm like, oh, well. Um, So how do we find out about these opportunities? Sure, maybe you can start us off here. How do we find out about opportunities? How would we pursue these? Well, I think it's important first to consider what are you interested in? What do you want to put your time, talents, what do you want to give to? Um, And then seek out opportunities there. There are lots of nonprofit organizations that I'm sure would love to have 
folks who um, you know can can come on with a new perspective and can share um, whatever their talents are with the organization. So I really think it's important to to think about what you want to do uh, because there are lots of boards out there and they all have different processes. Some you must be nominated, some you can uh, you know apply. Um, so find out what that process is. But informational interviews with folks who may be a part of the organization or a part of the board, so that you can learn a little bit more. Not what's on the website, but so that you can find out from a human being, what is this experience like? Tell me more about this organization. What are some of the challenges? Because I believe when you're being recruited or when you ask those questions in a way as if you are pursuing, you're going to find out um, some information that may not be on the website. And you're, you'll get those, those current events, those current things that are going on. So I do think it's important to reach out, find out what um, folks who you admire, folks who you consider mentors, what are they involved in? What are some recommendations that they might have and then move forward in that way? But I, I believe there's something out there for everyone. It's just finding what you're willing to put your time and talents toward. Mm -hmm. Great. And, and I, I'm Assuming that uh, as you're all involved in different boards, some of them I'm assuming are very intensive and more like a, another job and others are show up occasionally, offer some good thoughts, contribute to the conversation, minimal time commitment. That might be another thing for people to pursue as they're doing these informational interviews and checking out, doing their homework. Uh, Alvin, what else would you suggest for folks who are interested in being more involved in some of these ways to pursue them? Yeah, I, I agree with what you all have offered um, thus far. You know, for me, um, it legitimately was about um, really understanding um, the differences between um, the different types of boards um, and the, the various commitments and obligations that I would have to make in order to really engage um, with the particular boards uh, financially and otherwise. Um, you know, so, um, you know, is, is there an expectation um, that I'm giving um, on an annual basis and at a certain level in order to maintain my participation? And is it, um, is it you know, get and give um, or just give um, from mm -hmm. my own sort of personal um, um, finances? Um, you know, and that, that's in addition to um, the, 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 the gift of time um, that Cherie was talking about earlier. Um, there's also um, understanding the differences between leadership boards and, and boards that have um, fiduciary and legal obligations um, and, and whether or not um, you're interested in taking on those responsibilities um, as a part of your work um, with a particular organization. Um, the, the, the additional piece that I would offer, um, you know, I, I've been fortunate in that I've been invited um, to be a part of each of the boards that I'm currently involved in. Um, and, and certainly in, in my past, there have been others that I've applied to or been elected into. Uh, but in this instance, um, it was by invitation. Uh, but I know that in the city of Seattle, um, there are multiple associations um, that also um, take some responsibility for helping folks get placed into board opportunities. Um, so if you have limited um, experience with boards and you're interested in getting connected and finding out about the various opportunities that are available um, in your geographical area, you can connect with these organizations and they can help you um, in sort of a TPE kind of a way, um, get connected to different opportunities um, where you can learn um, from folks who are currently involved either at the staff or board level about the different opportunities um, and, and pursue them in, in that regard. Um, and so um, there are a range of ways that you can learn about them, get connected, uh, but the informational interviews that Cherie talked about um, are great ways to, to, to get the inner workings of an association, um, even when invited. Um, I you know, noted I was invited, but I did informational interviews after receiving those invitations. So that I was very clear about what I was getting into and, and whether or not I could legitimately make that commitment. Yeah, I'll just add, I think uh, another, you mentioned associations, but sometimes different communities have, you know, association of nonprofits or, or foundation of foundation or association of associations. I think another avenue is uh, they're often in communities are search firms that specialize in the nonprofit sector. And even though you're not looking for a job in the nonprofit sector, those folks know boards, know who needs, knows what they're looking for, uh, and can kind of do some matchmaking, which uh, it can be mutually beneficial. Uh, Tanisha, what else would you offer folks who are thinking about pursuing this? Sure, I, I think to um, 
just from reading the newspaper, you start to see the different organizations that are active. And I think that was one of the things that helped me because I, you're always, um, you, you see people in the news, but then typically they're pro solving a problem or, or paying attention to a specific issue. So that's what would keep um, it on my radar. Many times we find ourselves on these boards um, in a different type of pathway. So I think about the YWCA, I started to attend uh, professional de development workshops. I went to conferences. I was asked to serve on a selection committee. And next thing I know, I was I was on the board. And then next thing I knew, I was the president for a little while. And it was like, whoa, this whole a growth trajectory of volunteerism that I think happens to us organically. And so I think that's probably another pathway for people who are interested is, is just staying at the pulse of the organizations that you're truly interested in. Um, I think oftentimes too, um, especially if you're in a community for a long, for a long standing time, um, there will be people that will notice your activities, whether you're volunteering or, or, or your, the work that you do. And sometimes we'll sit down uh, and have a conversation with you and say, hey, I know that you have a passion about this. What about serving on, on this board? So I think doing your due diligence is the main takeaway, especially um, if it's the traditional way or the non-traditional way of, of getting involved. It's, it's making sure you do that due diligence aspect. Uh, before we move to our next question, I just want to interject here with uh, what are some of the benefits? Um, what have been really some of the takeaways? I know you talked about your passions and your commit commitments, but has there been paid for trips? Have there been connections and network, uh, people who you meet? What have been some of the real tangible benefits that you've taken away from some of these experiences? Um, sure, you want to lead us off here? Sure. I haven't had any paid for trips, so <laughs> maybe I'll bring that up. You need a board, board with a junket. <laughs> <laughs> I will admit I, I have been a part since since uh, the pandemic. And so mm -hmm. everything has been um, virtual. I think we have had a few meetings in person, actually, mm -hmm. Tanisha. I remember yeah. we did go and we were outside and it, yeah. it was really nice. But yeah. um, I, I would say that some of the benefits are really getting to know the resources that are available. Uh -huh. Um, there are some organizations that we we know very surface level information about, and I feel like I have learned more about the inner workings mm -hmm. of an organization in such a way that I can pass that information along to mm -hmm. folks who need it. Mm -hmm. And to be someone who can, you know, sprinkle this information in communities that might not receive it otherwise, or might hear it differently in a mm -hmm. pamphlet on a website than hearing it directly from myself, who I believe am a, you know, a trusted person in the community, <laughs> I think it makes a difference. And so yeah. I, I appreciate the things that I have learned and how I've been able to pass the information along. Also, some of the, the things that I want to work on for myself in terms of, you know, learning more, um, you know, all their budgets are always changing. I always love learning about budgets and I have been able to dig into that in a way um, that I have never done before. And so I'm learning things that I can then apply in many other settings. And I really do appreciate that. Um, and one of the non-traditional uh, boards um, is, working a lot with policy and legislation. And that's something that is near and dear to my heart is what I believe um, will, will make the change that I hope to see across mm -hmm. this country. And so mm -hmm. to be engaged in drafting legislation and how do we talk about this if we're asked to testify before um, committees at the Capitol or those kinds of things has really um, been helpful. And I have the skills that, you know, a class, I don't think would teach me this in right. the way of this real life application mm -hmm. and seeing it in real time, uh, failing or, or, or not succeeding, but then, okay, now what do we do next? The right. now what, <laughs> you know, right. that's still important. And so how do we continue um, to move things forward and make changes? And, and that's, that's been really yeah. beneficial to me. So I, I heard having some insider info to, to be yes. for you and to be helpful for others, just your own learning and growing and professional development, but then also being able to shape some of the things go on. And I think you kind of pointed to another type of community involvement that we haven't mentioned yet, which are political campaigns. And I've known many student affairs professionals who have 
been a part of a campaign or uh, chaired a campaign for a city council or something like that. That's maybe another way to think about some of this. Uh, Tanisha, now then, what would you add for some of the benefits that, that you've seen or that you've seen others experience? I, I would say just add to that is that you have no idea the issues um, or the impact that will um, come down the line for the organizations that you're involved with. I take like the, the Girl Scouts. There is so much going on on the national level that trickles down to your, your local level and how as a board member you respond and stay attuned to those issues is really important because you could just be out doing your, your regular daily activities and someone knows that you're affiliated with this board and may have a question about the organization's stance. And if you're not informed, then you kind of fail both yourself, the organization, and then the person that's seeking the information. So it's really helped me to stay abreast of what's happening so that as a, a member, I am very active and mindful about the pace about the issues, about the trajectory, so that I can give um, a solid explanation if someone approaches me about an issue that's happening. So I think, again, going back to due diligence as a board member is, is, is super important. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and learning about the national issues so you can be effective on the local level. Mm -hmm. I'm also assuming that some people's uh, local level involvement can then lead to roles with national Right. Um, things as well. Seeing right. not any hand. Alvin, what would you add here about some of the benefits that you've seen or experienced? Sure. The the the, the influence piece is significant. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, it it my involvement has placed me in situations and at tables that I wouldn't otherwise be present at, um, and and the opportunity to really dig deep into issues that are impacting this community that I care very deeply about. Um, is, is a great benefit. Um, it also has exposed me um, to um, a range of leaders in a range of different sectors, political and otherwise, um, who are interested in hearing my perspective because of the involvement that I have with these various boards. Mm -hmm. the, the other piece that has been um, really critical um, is um, thinking about it through sort of an intersectional lens um, that um, you know, the, the YMCA, as an example, um, really brings together, uh, you know, healthy living, um, education, um, youth violence prevention, and, and other areas that we tend to spotlight in ways that are meaningful um, for me as an educator, um, but also um, for the experiences that a variety of different people um, are having. Um, and, and, and that has been um, a huge asset and, and benefit. Professionally, it also benefits me um, mm -hmm. in that, uh, you know, you know I, I work at a university that's situated um, in this neighborhood, um, and it's granted us an opportunity um, to think about um, new partnerships or new collaborative um, opportunities that we wouldn't have uh, been exposed to um, otherwise. Um, it also, uh, you know, when, when I go out into the neighborhood, um, you know, I'm Alvin, who's on this board, but also who works at Seattle University. Right. Um, and, um, it, you know, it, it creates an opportunity um, to expose students to someone who looks like me, um, who's in a senior role at this university, um, to think about what enrollment at this university might be like for students who've not historically considered us. Um, and, and that is a huge benefit and advantage, at least for my my perspective um, in that um, it, it brings together all of my worlds um, in ways that really make a difference for me um, as I think about my leadership. Yeah, one of the things that I didn't hear you all mention, but I have to assume as a part of the experience, don't you just meet wonderful people? Oh, I just got to imagine yeah. the people who you meet on these boards might be people that you would never would meet in higher ed, have a different perspective, different ways of engaging. Yeah. And uh, I, I assume the professional networking and connections is invaluable, but I also bet you make some good friends that you're having over to the house for dinner and, and some of that as well. Absolutely. I, I would say too, um, with some of the organizations, um, they, they've longstanding members who may have been the trailblazers in these organizations and establishing yeah. those relationships um, has been absolutely rewarding. And mm. they, it, and it, and it also steps outside of the board 
life, right? It goes into the personal life and you're able mm-hmm. to learn more about their families and why they actively became involved in these organizations. So I think that's the glue that keeps us mm-hmm. coming back many times to these different organizations. Yeah, awesome. Shereen Alvin, you want to add to that about the relationships and the connections? Yeah, I, I agree with what Tanisha just offered. Uh, you know, the, the the relationships, the friendships, the connections that I've been able to establish um, through my board involvement um, have far exceeded my expectations. Uh, you know, to, to some degree, um, there are folks who want to get in and get out um, and aren't really, um, you know, sure. vested in creating um, these lifelong um, relationships. Um, and, and, and certainly that's not the case for me. Um, I get involved in things um, primarily because of the opportunity to you know, engage in community and to create a new village um, for myself. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and that's definitely been the case um, with, with these boards. Um, these, these are folks um, who, as you noted, Keith, uh, you know, we're you know, over to one another's homes for meals and, and, and our families are connected and, and tapped into um, one another. And we're seeing, um, you know, different uh, milestones occur in one another's lives. And without the, these boards, we wouldn't have likely known each other, let alone um, have these more intimate relationships with one another. Yeah. And just the serendipity, right? And then you meet them, who knows this, who knows this, who knows this. And I think I've, I've heard some of the serendipity coming, coming along. Sheree, do you want to add anything on the personal relationship? You know, nothing dinner. really different than what, what's been said, um, but but I found the, the support to be really nice. So we may meet in, on this board, but we talk about uh, something else that we have in common. And so now there's an invitation to go hiking together or to do something that maybe you've never done or to have an experience alongside someone. And so I think it, it really just opens up, um, you know, your experiences, but those relationships, and to be able to then get to know one another outside of whatever setting you may have met, but that's going to then come back and strengthen the work that you do on the board, because you've gotten to know one another and understand one another and your perspectives and experiences outside of the board. So I really think that that ultimately it does strengthen everything that you're, you're working on. Well, I know that as, as student affairs professionals, we are in the relationship business, right? That's that's the business that we're in. Um, and I I just will just say, having uh, coached more than 100 different coaching clients, I've never had one who didn't want more friends. Uh, people who have a lot of friends want more friends. People who have two friends would really like a third. <laughs> people want more friends. So if you feel like I want more friends, but everybody else is good, they all want more friends too. So these connections and these opportunities of who you get to meet and connect particularly for for senior level folks, right? As you're moving through campus, sometimes those personal relationships just can't be done. Sometimes that's about power and hierarchy. Sometimes it's about role and conflicts of interest and you never know. And so it's kind of nice to be in these other situations where some of that is a little bit different. Well, we've talked about this already, but I do want to just kind of give each of you a chance what do you think folks would, would really think about? You've, you've done not just boards, but multiple boards. You've had involvement. As Tanisha pointed to, it doesn't always go as you would expect it would go. Um, what would you want folks to really think through before they would make this commitment? And Alvin, we'll start with you. Sure. I got ahead of myself earlier and shared some of this um, already, uh, but the the, the time commitment piece, um, I think, is critical. Um, knowing um, specifically um, what um, the time commitment is and, and what is expected of you um, as a board member um, is a significant part of, I think, the decision-making process. Mm-hmm. Um, un- understanding and assuring that the, the work of the board aligns with your interest um, and the things that you're passionate um, about um, and that you um, can honestly see the obligation through from beginning to end. Uh, you know, so, you know, term limits uh, are part mm-hmm. of board experiences. And as I noted, the board that I just joined is a three-year term um, with renewable um, options. Um, and um, it, it's important to be thinking about that um, because oftentimes you're brought onto a board um, and that board um, already has um, uh, imagine what the next level of involvement will be um, for you. And while you may be thinking about it in the context of one term and done, they're not thinking about it necessarily in that regard. Um, and so, um, you know, giving yourself an opportunity to really think about 
you know, how long I want to be involved, um, what level of involvement um, I want to have, do I want to be a part of an executive committee um, of the board, um, you know, I'm current chair of the YMCA board of directors. I didn't join the board with the expectation that that would happen. And, and, and of course, here I am six years later, <laughs> and, and I'm still one on the board in my second term and two um, as the chair. Um, and, and, and so th those are the things that, that are, in, are and were important for me. And then the other piece that I offered earlier around the different types of boards, uh, you know, leadership, fiduciary, legal, understanding, um, you know, the, 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 the various sort of nuances associated with the different types of boards um, and, and really doing your homework and understanding, um, you, know, you know, as Sheree was talking about earlier, do I really want to be in the weeds of budgets um, and mm -hmm. finances? Um, or am I more interested in, um, you know, advising and consulting around programs and services? Um, because those different opportunities are certainly available. Mm -hmm. Great. Tanisha, what would you want folks to really think through? I would say that you're the chairman of your board are really looking for members who are committed and committed means that you're committed to the mission. So make sure you study the mission, the goals, the aspirations of the organization. I think too, taking seriously the agenda items that you're discussing at a meeting. And, you know, I know we're all very busy. So, but I, I think it's, it's really important to take a look at those agendas and make sure you have your questions about the issues. And I think the other organic piece is that if there's something that's coming up uh, that you have to discuss at a meeting, contact one of your fellow board members before the meeting and maybe talk about, am I off base? Am I understanding this correctly? Because your meeting time is really precious. Um, and so being fully present and being able to contribute is really important. And I think much of the work that we do in these organizations requires some problem solving with a positive attitude. We know that some of these issues can get heated and maybe we are not all on the same page. So how do you find that, that balance and have a positive attitude and make informed decisions is going to really um, push upon your skill set that you utilize, whether it be in your profession or within these um, board settings. So I think it's, it's, it's really important to make sure, again, that alignment comes in, into play. And again, if, if it gets too deep in and it's not something that you're really committed to, I think it's time to just take some time to take a step back and just reassess what your value add is to these um, organizations. Well, you keep reminding me of homework. You reminded me that we should do our homework before yeah. we join a board. And now you're telling me once we're on the board, we need to do our homework there as well. Which yeah. is two really good suggestions. Yeah. yeah. And I think just another thing to add too is sometimes you step onto these boards and I've had this experience and I'm sure Alan and Cherie may have had it too, is when you come into a new setting and there's some background noise that you really are not familiar with, but you see that, mm -hmm. you know, there's people siding on one side of the fence and you don't know which way to go. I think trying to figure out those um, elements before you step onto the board is really helpful too. And I'm sure there's always a member willing to give the history. That's really important too. <laughs> yes, yeah, they'll rally you to one side or the other for sure. Yeah. Sheree, what else would you wanna add for folks to really think through? Those, those were really great things. I don't have a whole lot to add other than to say, you know, really think about why you want to be on this board, what you can add, what your um, impact could be. I think that's so important to, to not wait until you're on the board to try to figure out a plan, but to think about that in advance, because that's gonna help you make an informed decision about whether or not this is going to be the best place for you to do that. I, I think sometimes we hear other people who've had great experiences with boards. And so we wanna encourage people to participate in boards, but the reality is that boards are not for everyone. Mm -hmm. um, we all have different approaches that we might take to reaching a goal or to get things accomplished. And so for some, it may be on a board. For others, that just may not be the way to do that. So really think about why you want to do that and how you might um, envision your impact happening um, through the work on the board. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, you all have been great. I just want to remind uh, those watching and listening you also don't have to sign up for three boards right away like these three folks have done. You can just start with one and ease your way into it. They're here as experts to really guide us through here. Oh, we are running out of time. 
And uh, the podcast is called Student Affairs Now. And we always like to end on this question of what are you thinking about, troubling, or pondering now? It might be something related to our conversation or just something that you're really with in this moment uh, in time. And uh, also, if you want to share where folks can connect with you, uh, feel free to go ahead and do that. And Shri, what are you troubling now? Oh, I love this question. I've been, <laughs> I've been thinking about a whole lot of things, but... <laughs> Yeah. Um, but I would say, you know, I really am thinking a lot about self-care mm -hmm. and, you know, during this pandemic, I've had a lot of time to think about what is important to me and what may not be as important to me. I've had time to really um, experience it, experience some of the challenges that I'm seeing in the community some of the challenges that students are experiencing because when they come to us, they do not leave who they are behind and real world things behind. Um, and just the, the need to be flexible and, and be understanding that we all are experiencing this differently and the way that we deal with it um, is not always the same. Um, so I, I've just been thinking about being, being, <laughs> You know, my grandma would say, be stingy with your time. <laughs> and, and I, you know, I'm thinking not in, not in such a way that is, you know, you, you want to, you don't want to share it with others, but think about what you're giving to others, but also don't forget yourself. And mm -hmm. I know that I've, I've lost that in some ways um, because I get very passionate about things and I start talking fast and I care about it and I want to make change. And well, if you're not doing it the way that I think it should be done, well, I'll step in and I'll fix it. But what I'm learning is that that's me giving all the time, all of myself, but not really taking time to think about myself and how I can possibly reach that goal in a different way. And so the thing that I'm thinking about the most is self-care. Um, and for some participation and leadership and boards may be a form of self-care. Mm -hmm. So just think about what that means for you. Yeah, wonderful. Tanisha, what's with you now? I think what um, Sheree said, I'm, I'm doing that in a small little pilot. So I have a daughter who is a freshman and she has some college friends. And so I've, <laughs> I've been really mindful and trying to be very present with this group of young women, because I, when people ask you like, how did you get, or how did you choose your career path or how did you get where you are? I, I don't know. I think it was a, a, a trial and error and stepping out and just being um, courageous enough to do. And so just trying to instill in them the importance of community service, of how they um, pay attention to what's happening in the world and how those, issues impact their everyday lives and make sure that they're reading periodicals, you know, who wants to read the New York Times when you're in college and everything is so fast paced, take time to read, trying to create book lists, but I guess just really being present with them and allowing them to pick my brain, but also to give them some pearls of wisdom that maybe I didn't receive or maybe that I, that I missed because I was thinking that I knew everything. So I think mm -hmm. I'm just trying to be uh, a resource to them and then hopefully spread that to other young people who are in a, in a, at, the, at a point in their lives where they're trying to figure things out. So just trying to, trying to be a role model, but a present and active role model. So that, helps, allows me too to reach back at some of the things that I've learned on these boards and be able to share with them because much of the stuff that I've learned, maybe I didn't learn until I stepped onto these boards. So a lot, trying to help them be holistic and present with themselves. So that's where I am right now. I'm really hearing how generous you are and how rejuvenating that is for you to be generous in these ways. Yeah. Alvin, what is with you now? What Sheree and Tanisha both offered um, strongly resonates with me. Um, you know, I, I, I've been thinking about it, though, through the, the lens of responsibility and obligation and the sense that I feel <laughs> um, to my communities um, and how that influences the, the, the types of things that I choose to get involved in. And Tanisha, in particular, when you were speaking, um, you know, the, the, the other piece for me is sort of one-on-one -on -one mentorship um, and with um, 
black men in particular. Um, and, and there are a number of those relationships that I'm currently uh, nurturing. Um, those who are both students of mine here at the university and who are more um, engaged in my life out in the, the community. Um, and you know, folks oftentimes um, talk about, you have to be tired. Um, and you know, Sheree, I go back to what you said earlier, the, the, the things that you love doing are the things that you make time for. And while I feel a sense of responsibility and obligation, I also love doing these things. Um, and, and they are life-giving and, and, and give me so much um, energy and are rooted in who I am as a person. And, and I got that from my grandmother. Um, the, you know, there, there, there is no time um, when you shouldn't be thinking about the impact that you can have on your community. Um, and if you have the obligation or the opportunity to really give back in ways that others can't, um, you really need to be thinking about how you can best um, do that and, and how you can show up in ways that are authentic and courageous and allow you to be vulnerable. And for me, that's what my involvement is about. Um, I, I recognize um, that I hold privileges um, that I haven't always held. Um, and as a result of that, um, my presence in these spaces is required in a different kind of way. Um, and so that, that's the piece that's always sort of sitting with me as I think about um, my life, my work, and, and my involvement. Mm -hmm. Was the second grandmother shout out we've gotten in today. So thank you all for that. Some themes Grandmas here. Grandmas know some things. Yes, yeah. they do. So grandmothers <laughs> around generosity, around really what is my purpose and how do I align what I do with my purpose and also the purpose of these organizations. And then the, the, the ideally reciprocity of giving and receiving, but it doesn't always work that way. And how do you navigate all of that? So some really great themes. Uh, this has been terrific. Uh, thanks to each of you. Congrats to each of you on your leadership roles. And thank you for the contributions you're making and for sharing all of this with us today. We so appreciate it. Thanks also to our sponsors of today's episode, Leadership and Vector Solutions. Leadership partners with colleges and universities to create transformational leadership experiences, both virtual and in person for students and professionals with a focus on creating a more just, caring, and thriving world. Leadership offers engaging learning experiences on courageous dialogue, integrity, equity, resilience, and community building. To find out more, please visit leadership.org slash virtual programs or connect with them on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn. And Vector Solutions, how will your institution rise to reach each of, to reach today's socially conscious generation? These students report commitments to safety, well-being, and inclusion are as important as academic rigor when selecting a college. It's time to reimagine the work of student affairs as an investment, not an expense. For over 20 years, Vector Solutions, which now includes the Campus Prevention Network, formerly EverFi, has been the partner of choice for more than 2,000 colleges and universities and national organizations. With nine efficacy studies behind their courses, you can trust and have full confidence that you're using the standard of care for student safety, well-being, and inclusion. Transform the future of your institution and the community you serve Learn more at vectorsolutions.com slash student affairs now. Huge shout out to Nat Ambrosi, the production assistant for the podcast, who does all the behind the scene work to make us all look and sound good. And if you're listening today and not already receiving our weekly newsletter, please visit our website at studentaffairsnow.com, scroll to the bottom of the homepage and add yourself to our list. You, while you're there, check out our archives. I'm Keith Edwards. Thanks again to our fabulous guests and, and their grandmothers and all that they shared today, and to everyone who is watching and listening, please make it a great week. Thank you all.